earlier session, we discussed the limb girdle muscular dystrophies and an unusual variant that results from mutation to laminin proteins found in the nuclear pore complex rather than in the dystrophin associated glycoprotein complex. Additional mutations to proteins associated with the nuclear envelope were identified in the 1960s that had some similarities to the limb girdle muscular dystrophies but were distinct enough to justify the development of a novel classification system. As with Duchenne muscular dystrophy, this class was named according to the physicians that first documented the conditions and are now referred to as Emery Dreyfus muscular dystrophies. In this session, we'll describe the disease progression of this group of disorders and discuss treatment options for care in this population. Emery Dreyfus muscular dystrophy has distinct similarities to limb girdle muscular dystrophy in that they both manifest at a later time point than Duchenne muscular dystrophy and have dramatic effects on the limb girdle musculature. This is not altogether surprising as a variant of limb girdle muscular dystrophy affects a protein of the nuclear pore complex and a different type of mutation to the same gene product results in a form of Emery Dreyfus muscular dystrophy. What makes Emery Dreyfus muscular dystrophy a distinct class is the involvement of distal limb musculature and the presence of joint contractures that is not seen with limb girdle muscular dystrophy. There is also a distinct cardiac component with Emery Dreyfus muscular dystrophy that is typically not seen with limb girdle muscular dystrophy. This cardiac involvement plays a major role in morbidity and mortality in this patient group. In five of the six identified cases of EDMD, the affected protein is part of the link or linker of nucleoskeleton and cytoskeleton complex, which is thought to form a mechanical link between the scaffolding of these two regions. Some of the identified proteins affected in EDMD include emerin, which received its name from the disease. This is a linker protein that binds the nuclear membrane to the nucleoskeleton. Similar to dystrophin, this protein is found on the X chromosome and therefore demonstrates an X-linked inheritance pattern. Variants 2 and 3 involve mutations in lamin A and lamin C proteins, which are also found associated with the inner nuclear envelope. The variant affecting lamin A has an autosomal dominant expression pattern, while that for lamin C is autosomal recessive. The pathophysiology of the disease is not clearly understood. These proteins are ubiquitously expressed throughout the body, but the most pronounced effects are on certain skeletal muscles as well as cardiac muscle. One possibility is that loss of these protein components results in destabilization of the nucleoskeleton, which affects gene expression, and that muscle is more dramatically affected due to the mechanical stresses that exist across the membrane. It's also possible that these defects compromise myonuclear localization and disrupt the myonuclear domain, leading to excessive muscle damage. As with limb girdle muscular dystrophy, the onset of symptoms is highly variable, depending on the specific mutation. The patient initially presents with slowly progressing muscular weakness, particularly in the limb girdle musculature. Muscle contracture is also observed, particularly in the muscles controlling elbow, ankle, and cervical spine function, and can actually precede observed muscle weakness. Another consistent finding are indications of cardiomyopathy and conduction abnormalities related to the effects of the disease on cardiac tissue. As initial symptoms share many similarities to limb girdle muscular dystrophy, the early differential diagnosis should consider both conditions and therefore follow a similar course. Initial blood tests should show only a modest increase in creatine kinase. Observed elevations that are greater than 10 times normal indicate that a disorder other than EDMD should be taken into consideration. ECG studies should be considered whenever EDMD is suspected. A variety of abnormal tracings have been observed, with bradycardia being the most consistent of these findings. Muscle biopsy samples will show the typical pathology associated with most muscular dystrophies, and immunohistochemical staining for link complex proteins should be considered for abnormal staining patterns to assist with the specific diagnosis. It's difficult to accurately assess the frequency of EDMD in the general population. 
To date, only 50% of the identified cases have been linked to a known gene product, and so many cases may go undiagnosed. The best estimate is about 1 to 2 individuals per 100,000. Early interventions are similar to those for other muscular dystrophies, with the focus on maintaining range of motion and limiting joint deformities. Surgical tenotomy can be used to reduce the effects of contracture, and pacemaker units are typically implanted by the age of 30 to treat cardiac arrhythmias. Life expectancy is highly variable, but is typically reduced due to fatal cardiac events. That concludes the segment on Emery Dreyfus muscular dystrophy and on the muscular dystrophies that will be covered in this class. In the final segment, we will take a brief look at a young lady with a particularly aggressive form of EDMD. This should leave you with a perspective on the challenges faced by individuals living with muscular dystrophy, but also an appreciation for the humanistic side of the disease that you are learning about.